Hey guys, welcome to another video. This one is 10 iPhone settings that you can turn on right away. These are maybe some unknown settings that you don't know exist on the iPhone, but can really make your life easier and just make it easier to use the iPhone overall. So let's go through these 10 iPhone settings that you can turn on. And we're gonna start with the first one, which is the magnifier. The magnifier can really help you reading text that is small that you need to make larger. So we can come into the settings right here and then come down to accessibility. So click on that one. Then we can come down to magnifier and as you can see it is off right now, but you can click in here and just turn it right on. Now, once this is turned on, you can actually set up a few different shortcuts to use it, but the easiest one is once you have turned it on, just press the power button three times quickly and it will go straight into the magnifier. So I'm gonna do that now, one, two, three. And then as you can see, you get this awesome magnifier that you can use. So you can get really close to text. You can of course press this option down here and then you can just zoom in super, super close to things. And it really, really does work as a magnifying glass. You can also come and press the settings button here and there's options. So you can increase the brightness and the contrast, even put filters on there and use the torch as well. So you can come and just expand everything like this and you can see some different options. So let's turn the torch on. Probably can't see it, but the torch is on now. So that's gonna help you if you are in a dark place. Let's zoom right in like this, take an image and there you have it. You can take an image and then you can come up and share it with everyone as well. Really good feature and definitely does help you out in certain situations. Next one is to block spam callers. No one likes those. You can actually block all notifications from people that aren't specifically in your address book. The way that we can do that is come right into our settings and then scroll down to phone so we can go into phone and then scroll down to silence unknown callers. If we click on this, we can turn this on. And then as you can see, calls from unknown numbers will be silenced, but they will be sent to voicemail and displayed on the recents list. That's a great thing, but of course this might be to your detriment if you're receiving a call from someone that isn't on your list. But luckily they will all be in your recents list. So you can go to your recents list and check out any calls that you may have missed without getting bugged all the time by spam. The next thing I wanna do is prevent cross-site tracking. This is when you use Safari to look at something online and then you go into another app like Twitter and you get an advert for the thing that you're looking at. It happens all the time to me, super annoying, but you can turn it off. Let's come into our settings then and you have to scroll down to Safari settings right here. We can then scroll down to all of these different options and as you can see, I have this turned on already because I just don't like seeing those adverts for products that I've looked at on Amazon or something that obviously I don't wanna buy, otherwise I would have already, or if you get adverts for things that you bought. So you can turn this on or off. This is going to prevent a lot of the cookies that are saved on Safari specifically that can be shared with other services. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook, you've seen all of those ads for these weird products that come up. Well, this is one of the things that they actually use to serve you those ads. It's not gonna prevent you from getting ads, but they are not going to be able to use as much of your data, which for me is a good thing. And leading on from that, you can also prevent ad tracking as well between apps. This is kind of an add-on, so let's come into settings once more and we can actually come up to privacy this time. So let's click on privacy. Then we can come and do a couple of things. First, we can scroll right down to the bottom and come to Apple advertising, personalized ads. You can turn this right off. You will still get ads. You can't turn ads off, but they can not use as much of your data to give these personalized ads. So let's just turn that off. Then as you scroll out of there, we can come right up to tracking here as well. Come into tracking, allow apps to request to track. You can also turn this right off to reduce some of the information that they're gonna keep on you. If you don't like your data being used and probably sold off, then you can come right in here and turn these off. Like I said, still gonna get ads, but they're gonna use less of your data. Another great feature that you would definitely wanna turn on is using your medical information in the iPhone. I see no reason why not to do this. It could potentially save your life. I personally have asthma and a couple of allergies, which you know could potentially be really dangerous. And so if you do have something like an allergy, especially to nuts or something, you're gonna to wanna to turn this on. We're gonna come into settings right here and then come down uh, to the health settings here. And you can see this option, medical ID. So we can actually fill out some health details and also medical ID as well. So we come into medical ID and it says create medical ID. Let's do this for now. So create medical ID. You can list all of your medical conditions. And this is really important because someone can actually see these. So maybe if you pass out or you know you have an allergic reaction to something and people don't really know why, well, they can look on your iPhone and get some really important information that could potentially save your life. 
You can add your information, so add your birth date, medical conditions right here. You can add your blood type uh, and also your height and weight. And this is you know, really important information that uh, emergency services might have to use. So you can just add this in, go to next like this, this can then be shown to people that use your phone on the lock screen. So if I just come back out of here, so what we can do now is actually turn the phone off like this and then uh, try and unlock the phone. It's obviously going to fail, so it's not going to read my face ID like this. Can't do that. Then you can see down at the bottom, emergency. So click on emergency like this. You can actually go to medical ID right here. You can click on medical ID. This could potentially save your life. It's a great feature of the iPhone and a setting you should definitely look to use. Next is do turn on the ability to actually take calls on your other Apple devices. And this probably is turned on already for you, but if it isn't, it might be really useful. So we can come into settings right here and then actually come up to mobile data. If you're in the States, I think this is called cellular data, but it's the same option. So we can come in here, then we can come to calls on other devices. So if you click on this, you can change it around. If your Apple devices are on the same Wi-Fi connection, then they will call when your iPhone calls, which is, I think, useful in some situations. Other situations, it actually really annoys me, to be honest, but most of the time I do like it. So, you know, if your iPad's there or your, even your MacBook, you can see that someone is calling you. If they're in your contacts, it will get through to who it is. So if you are close to your other devices and they're on the same Wi-Fi, then you will be able to do that. And I think it's just a great feature that you might want to turn on. A new feature that came with iOS 14 was back tap and you might want to turn this on. I actually turned this off because I tap my phone all the time. I realized that I kind of nervously tap my phone and when I'm bored, I just tap the back of the phone and I was taking like screenshots and selfies like all the time, but it's quite a good option. So we come to settings, then you can come down to touch. So we click on touch and there's lots of things you can change in here, but we can scroll down to back tap. So you can actually turn this on and you can double tap the back or triple tap the back of your phone and then put that against the setting. So you can see all of these different settings. You can use it as an app switcher. You can put the lock screen on there. You can mute something. Screenshot's really good. So if you double tap, you can map that to a screenshot. Triple tap as well, just to a different option. So you have two options, either a double tap or a single tap. Like I said, I don't really use it because I tap my phone all the time and I was just opening things up. So I turn it off, but it might be something that you want to use. Next setting you might want to turn on is the use of Apple Raw. And this came with the iOS 14 upgrade in the iPhone 12 series. Apple Raw is really a very high end imaging uh, format. So we're going to come into settings right here. And then we're going to come down to the camera app and you can see format. So we go into formats and you've got an option for Apple Pro Raw. You do have to be on, I think, iOS 14.3 or above, but you can click this on. RAW is something that professional photographers use to get the most data possible out of their image. So it is a much, much larger file. The reason it's called RAW is because it's completely uncompressed. Usually when you take images, you're going to take a JPEG or a PNG file, and these are compressed images. And so that means the data is lost. They you know, take a lot of the data away to make a much smaller file size, which is obviously beneficial in many ways. But having a RAW image gives you the entire file size. And that's really good because more data just means more quality in the image. Apple do say that RAW gives you more dynamic range, but as far as I'm aware, I don't think you can use HDR uh, when using RAW. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Obviously, HDR gives us a huge amount of dynamic range anyway, but it is baked into the photo. With RAW, it's a professional thing. And you can change everything yourself. Keeping on camera settings, let's try and use the hidden images feature. So I'm actually going to come over to the photos application right here. If we actually go to albums and then scroll down, you should see this hidden option here. So hidden images you can come up to a selfie, maybe click on this. You can then actually come down to the share option right here. And if you just scroll down, you can see that you can hide this image. So it says, do you want to hide this photo? I can click yes, then go back. That image is now hidden from my albums, but it is in my hidden album right here. But this isn't very hidden, is it? Because someone can click on this. We can actually go and hide this album itself. So we come out of here, we go into the settings option. We can then come to photos right here, and then we can come down to hidden album and we can turn this off. Now, when we go back into 
uh, our albums, you can see hidden is not there anymore. The image is totally gone. So that is actually how you hide images specifically. You can then come back to photos, turn hidden album on. If we just swipe through the hidden album comes back and you do have that image. So that is how you actually do hide images. You can put them in hidden and then you can hide the hidden option as well and really hide images on your phone, even though they are still there so that you can look at them at a later date. And the next one is to use the grid when you're taking images as well. So let's come into settings and let's just go into camera right here. And this is right here for me and I use this all the time, the grid. So when you're taking images, I always like to have the grid on. Also with grid as well, if you do take photos of food or photos from above, you can actually have this crosshairs with the grid and it only works with the grid. What this does really is tell you when your phone is perpendicular and absolutely flat. So taking photos from above can be an issue if you're taking it off to the side. It doesn't really look that good and you can't really change it. But with those crosshairs, it tells you exactly when you're level. So you know you're exactly above what's below you. It doesn't really take up much space in the screen. And I think there's benefits without any drawbacks. So I always have this on. Just turn the grid on. That is though 10 iPhone settings that I would suggest turning on and might help you with your phone. Let me know if you use any of these settings already or if you're going to use any of these after this video as well in the comments. That is it for this one though. Check out the channel for way more iPhone content. That's it for this one though. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.